of Diagnosis and the Treatment of HPV Infection. I'm Dr. Chao Hong Gao uh, from Taiwan. Uh, this is my uh, disclosure. My presentation will include the highlight of diagnostic essays for HPV infection, the risk stratification of HPV infection, the update on when to initiate HPV therapy, and the highlight of uh, current HPV uh, treatments, and introduce you uh, some uh, key clinical trials, uh, including uh, efficacy and the safety of uh, TAR. And lastly, conclusion. This slide shows the life cycle of HPV replication uh, with uh, quantifiable uh, viral markers. So as you can see, uh, some of the markers are commonly used in our clinical practice. For example, the hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen, and the HPV uh, DNA. In addition, there are some uh, novel or emerging uh, viral markers, uh, such as uh, hepatitis B uh, core-related antigen, and HPV RNA. Uh, this table uh, shows the common serological markers of HPV infection, uh, which uh, all of you are quite uh, familiar with. I would like to emphasize that the hepatitis B uh, surface antigen is the hallmark of HPV infection, and its presence for more than six months uh, refers to chronic HPV infection. And HPV antigens uh, indicate the active uh, viral replication uh, with high risk of uh, transmission to other uh, people. In addition uh, to the serological uh, markers, uh, the serum HPV uh, DNA uh, level has been uh, widely used uh, in our uh, daily uh, practice. Uh, the serum HPV DNA uh, can differentiate the chronic infection in active HPV carriers uh, versus the resolved HPV infection that is undetectable HPV uh, DNA. And in addition, the HPV DNA uh, level uh, correlate uh, well uh, with uh, disease progression. Usually, the higher the baseline HPV DNA level, the higher the risk of liver cirrhosis, HCC, and the liver-related mortality over time, as uh, indicated uh, by a previous review HPV study from Taiwan. Therefore, uh, by the combination of a serological and a virological profile, that is HPV DNA, uh, we can uh, differentiate the different phases of HPV infection in our uh, patients, uh, such as the active, acute hepatitis B, a result HPV, chronic hepatitis B, inactive HPV carriers, and occult hepatitis B. In recent years, the clinical significance of quantitative hepatitis B surface antigen has been increasingly uh, recognized. And the hepatitis B surface antigens uh, can be uh, from the complete infectious virions or from the uh, defective subviral uh, particles. And it is uh, from uh, the CCC DNA uh, transcription or messenger RNA uh, translation as well as from the integrated HPV uh, DNA uh, genome. So the serum HPSAG decline uh, means the reduction of CCC DNA uh, transcriptional activity and also uh, reflect the host immune control over HPV infection. Our earlier study uh, showed that the quantitative surface antigen is also important in patients with low uh, viral load, less than uh, 2,000 internationally per ml. So from our eradicate B uh, cohort, uh, in fact, uh, we have the similar finding uh, as uh, the review HPV study. That is, the higher the baseline HPV DNA level, the higher the risk of SCC. However, if we introduce the quantitative uh, surface antigen uh, into the patients with a uh, low viral load, if the surface energy level is uh, more than uh, 1,000 international units, uh, these patients have a five-fold increase uh, risk of ACC uh, compared to those with low surface energies. In summary, uh, by using uh, current HPV uh, markers, uh, including uh, the serological uh, biomarker and also some uh, biochemical index such as AOT level and also liver histology. Uh, we, these uh, markers uh, can be used uh, for the diagnosis of HPV infection 
and we could defy uh, the phases of uh, chronic diabetes uh, patients also can predict the prognosis of them. And it's also important uh, to initiate uh, the antiviral uh, therapy and also the on-treatment uh, monitoring of a uh, treatment uh, response. And I would like to introduce the uh, novel uh, HPV uh, markers, that is the hepatitis B uh, co-related uh, antigen. So uh, this is a recently emerged uh, marker, a potentially relevant marker HPV uh, infection. So it's positive correlation with HPV DNA uh, and also association with intrahepatic uh, CCC uh, DNA. And in uh, previous uh, clinical studies uh, showed the hepatitis B co-related antigen level more than a three log is an independent risk factor uh, for the occurrence of SCC in a large cohort of HPV patients uh, from uh, Japan. And the decline of uh, co-related antigen level under nuke therapy correlated well with the decrease of uh, CCC DNA and HPV uh, DNA. And study from Japan and Taiwan also indicated the low uh, hepatitis B co-related antigen indicates a safe uh, cessation of new therapy uh, with a durable uh, viral response. Our recent study uh, in the natural uh, history uh, HPV uh, cohort also showed that the hepatitis B uh, co-related antigen of 10 uh, kilo units per ml can stratify the risk of SCC in e-energy negative patients with intermediate uh, viral load. That is from uh, 2 to 20,000 IU uh, per ml, as shown uh, in this uh, Captain Meyer curve, with uh, an adjusted HALA ratio of uh, 6.7. Therefore, uh, I would like to draw your attention uh, to some uh, quantitative uh, HBB uh, markers that may affect the disease progression in Asian HBB uh, patients. For example, the HBB DNA quantitative surface antigen and the uh, hepatitis B uh, co-related antigen level. Most studies will come to show their clinical usefulness. Uh, by using uh, these uh, HPV uh, markers, I think we can stratify uh, the risk of SCC development in chronic hepatitis B uh, patients. So uh, nowadays, uh, many HCC uh, risk scores has been uh, developed uh, to predict SCC in untreated HPV patients. So among uh, these uh, risk scores, the rich B score is uh, uh, more uh, popular used uh, in Asian uh, countries. Uh, this score uh, contains uh, five uh, parameters, age, sex, ALT, e antigen status, and HPV DNA uh, level. Our own uh, studies also showed uh, we can uh, stratify the risk of SCC in e antigen uh, negative uh, chronic type B patients by incorporating HPV DNA, surface antigen, and hepatitis B core related antigen uh, level, as shown in this uh, flow chart. The patient with a high viral load, of course, they are in the high risk uh, group. And the patient with intermediate viral load, if they have a high uh, core related antigen level, they are also in the high-risk group. The patient with low viral load, uh, but with a high uh, hepatitis B surface antigens, uh, more than uh, 1,000, they are in the in intermediate uh, risk group. Uh, for those with low viral load and also low surface antigen, they are in the minimal SCC uh, risk group with the lowest uh, instance of SCC over time. So uh, if this uh, flow chart uh, can be uh, validated by further prospect study, uh, it can be very useful uh, in our clinical practice, especially for Asian HPV patients. Let's move on to, to the update on when to initiate uh, HPV uh, therapy. This uh, table uh, shows the uh, three international uh, guidelines about the initiation of uh, HPV uh, therapy in non-cirrhotic uh, patients. So the ASLD, uh, ESO, and APASO uh, HPV uh, guidelines 
as you can see, all these international guidelines are based on HPV DNA and ALT label. And sometimes they will consider the age of the patients, the family history of SCC or liver cirrhosis, and also the liver histology severity, including fibrosis and the histological activity. And uh, in ASLD and APASO, for e positive patients, the HPV DNA level cutoff is more than 20,000. And for inactive, above 2,000. In contrast, in the ESO guideline, the only cutoff is more than 2,000 IU per ml. And regarding the ALT level, the ASLD and APASO is uh, more than uh, two times upper medial normal and ESO is just with abnormal ALT uh, can initiate uh, antiviral uh, therapy. However, in a recent uh, Korean uh, research study called study, uh, in more than uh, 3,000 uh, treatment naive uh, chronic diabetes patients, uh, their data uh, show that there is a high proportion of uh, chronic diabetes patients outside the treatment criteria in current international guidelines still develop liver cancer over time. For example, uh, by using the ESO uh, criteria, 34%, uh, ASLD criteria, 46%, uh, and APASO criteria, up to 64%. So uh, these data uh, make, make us need to uh, consider uh, the appropriate uh, initiation uh, treatment uh, criteria uh, for chronic plasty uh, patients. Therefore, I invited uh, several uh, East Asia uh, experts to have their opinions on the treatment initiation of uh, chronic plasty B. Uh, we discussed the new data on the natural history, the definition of normal ALT, the non-invasive uh, test of liver uh, fibrosis, and also the availability of drugs with improved efficacy or safety. So after discussions, uh, we uh, proposed uh, 10 recommendations. The first one is uh, the patients with HPV DNA uh, more than 2,000 and ALT abnormal, the antiviral therapy is recommended. And for the patients uh, with uh, high HPV DNA, but a normal ALT. So we should consider the fibrosis. So if the, uh, they have a significant uh, fibrosis or necro inflammations, the antiviral therapy is recommended. If the patients already had the liver cirrhosis and the detectable HPV DNA, antiviral therapy is recommended regardless of uh, their ALT uh, level. And if the patient uh, had a positive uh, first degree uh, family history of cirrhosis or SCC and extrahepatic uh, manifestation or age about uh, 40 years, so antiviral therapy uh, should be considered. And the treatment decision uh, can be based on the non-invasive uh, test of significant fibrosis uh, by using the ATRI uh, FIP4 or a liver uh, stiffness uh, by a transient elastography. And in patients with persistently normal ALT, uh, we can uh, repeat the non-invasive uh, test uh, at the interval at or longer than uh, three years. And the liver biopsy may be considered in patients with a suspicion of other liver disease or unreliable or indeterminate results from an aforementioned non-invasive test of fibrosis. And for a chronic type B patients with at least two risk factors for SCC development, initiating antiviral therapy or close monitoring at a three month interval is recommended. So these risk factors include being albumin less than 3.5, apapitoprotein more than 20, surface antigen uh, above uh, 1,000, hepatitis B core related antigens above 10 kilo units, and the pericount count less than 130K. 
then I would like to highlight the current HPV uh, treatment. So the international uh, guideline already recommended uh, NUCS as the first line uh, treatment option uh, for uh, chronic hepatitis B. And among uh, the NUCS, the preferred uh, drugs include entecavir, TDF, or uh, TAF. And lamimutin, adepovir, and uh, tabibutin are not preferred. So uh, the, the preferred regimens are based on the good viral suppression and a lack of drug resistance. And also they can improve the survival and the life quality and also reduce the risk of SCC uh, development uh, through the long-term suppression of uh, viral replication. In the following slides, I will introduce some uh, key clinical trials of uh, uh, TAF. So there are two uh, phase three randomized uh, double-blinded uh, active uh, control uh, trials uh, for both E-positive and E-negative uh, patients. So these patients are randomized to receive a TAF or TDF uh, for uh, two to three years and then receive the open label uh, TAF uh, until week uh, 384. And there is an interim analysis at week uh, 220, 240. The efficacy endpoint is uh, a viral efficacy, and other endpoints include AOT, numeration, uh, serology, uh, fibrosis uh, change, and also genotypic uh, resistance. There are also a safety endpoint, especially about the bone and the renal uh, markers. So uh, these two figures show the high rates of viral suppression and AOT uh, numeration achieved uh, with the TAF over uh, five years uh, in, the, in these uh, two uh, figures. In addition, uh, when the patients uh, switch uh, to TAF, uh, there is an improvement in spine uh, bone uh, mineral density as shown in the, uh, the hand side and also the renal uh, parameters uh, in the uh, right hand side. In a phase three randomized uh, double-blinded active control study, there is a, a switch a study. The patients uh, re receiving a TDF uh, for more than uh, 48 weeks and then uh, randomized uh, to switch to TAF or continue a TDF uh, for 48 weeks and then uh, open uh, to a TAF until week 96. So uh, similarly, you can see there is a sustained uh, biological uh, suppression and also the significant increase in AOT uh, normalization after switch to uh, TAF in this uh, clinical trial. And there, there are improvement of uh, renal, uh, fun renal and the bone uh, function uh, following a uh, switch uh, from uh, TDF uh, to uh, TAF. In a real-world multi-center core study uh, with uh, chronic hepatitis B patients uh, who switch uh, to uh, TAF uh, after previous treatment with TDF uh, for over two years in uh, Japan. So we can find the continued uh, viral suppression and also the improvement uh, in AOT numeration uh, following a switch uh, from a TDF to TAF. There's another study, there's a switch uh, from entecavir uh, to a uh, TAF also uh, conducted in uh, Japan. So the data show that there's improvement in viral suppression uh, following the switch from entecavir to TAF in this uh, real world study. In conclusion, uh, dear chairpersons, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, so these are the strategies to eliminate HPV infection by 2030 as set by the WHO. So uh, we need to prevent the individuals uh, from acute hepatitis B virus infection by the implementation of universal uh, HPV vaccination. And we, we can uh, assay the maternal uh, HPV viral load and also give the antiviral prophylaxis 
in the third trimester of uh, pregnancy. And we also need to treat the patients with uh, peptides B uh, in time by providing the effective antiviral uh, treatment to reach the sustained uh, viral uh, suppression and also enhance a uh, compliance uh, with uh, antiviral therapy. Of course, uh, we need to develop the novel agent uh, for the eradication of intrahepatic uh, CCC DNA. Then we can provide a final therapy to chronic type B patients as we did uh, for uh, patients with uh, chronic hepatitis C. With this, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor Tao, for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and now we uh, move on a little question and answer for um, Professor Tao. Uh, now so we have the two questions for, uh, for you, Professor Tao. Uh, can you hear me? Professor Kao, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for uh, inviting uh, me. And uh, so uh, don't, please uh, ask me the question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Ka, for your interesting uh, presentation. And now we, ha uh, we have two questions for you. Uh, yeah. First question, uh, uh, if the patient has a chronic hepatitis B with the virus, uh, the viral load uh, more than uh, 2,000 units uh, per meal, uh, ALT normal and uh, no fibrosis, uh, but um, the patient had the high quantitative HBSAG level. Uh, will you start the treatment? Okay, I think this is a very, very yes. question. Yeah, I, uh, I answered the first question uh, first. So I think this is a very important question, especially in our clinical practice. So we may uh, encounter such uh, patients uh, in the OPD. So it's supposed this is the first time uh, to visit our uh, clinic. So the patient, the DNA is high, more than uh, 2,000, but uh, with a normal ALT and by maybe by using some uh, non-invasive test, there is no significant uh, fibrosis, but the surface antigen is high. So maybe up to uh, 3,000, 4,000. So uh, in, according to our previous study, a patient with low HPV DNA, low HPV DNA but with a high surface antigen, after uh, three years of follow-up, I think maybe 50% uh, of them will still have uh, uh, the rise of HPV DNA and AOT elevation. And so I, I think it is quite important because the surface antigen label may uh, reflect the host immune control over the virus. So if the surface antigen is high, uh, suggesting uh, this patient may not have a very good immune control. But at the moment, of course, we may not uh, treat the patient according to our recent uh, expert opinions, but this patient uh, needs to be uh, closely uh, followed, uh, maybe uh, three to six months. And if they have evidence of uh, uh, HPV DNA elevation and AOT elevation, I think we can uh, give the drugs uh, as early as possible. And in addition, uh, we uh, also need to consider uh, whether the patient uh, has the family history of uh, liver sclerosis or hepatocellular carcinoma or so-called the extrahepatic uh, manifestation. If uh, he or she has uh, such uh, history, I think uh, we can uh, start the antiviral therapy uh, earlier. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, th for thank, your you question. thank you, Professor Tao. Give me some seconds to summarize in Vietnamese for our colleagues. Okay, uh, dạ, no em, em xin phép uh, dịch uh, tóm tắt câu hỏi của quý đồng nghiệp liên quan đến uh, 
uh, bệnh nhân viêm gan B mạng mà tải lượng là dưới 2.000 men gan bình thường chưa có sơ hóa gan mà định lượng uh, HBSAJ cao thì có dùng thuốc kháng virus không? Thì giáo sư cũng có chia sẻ là đúng là cái nhóm bệnh nhân này thì mình cũng rất là hay gặp uh, và thậm chí là HBV, DNA hoàn toàn bình thường nhưng mà tải lượng uh, tải lượng HBSAJ lên 3.000, 4.000 thì khi mà mình làm cái sơ hóa gan mà không thấy có cái sơ hóa gan nặng nế thì họ đã tiến hành một cái nghiên cứu trong khoảng độ 3 năm theo dõi thì thấy là 50% số bệnh nhân mà có cái biểu hiện như thế này thì sau 3 năm là sẽ có các cái đợt mà tăng HBV, DNA hoặc là tăng uh, ALT do vậy cái nhóm bệnh nhân này thì mặc dù là các uh, chuyên gia chưa có cái sự đồng thuận nhất định về cái việc có bắt đầu tiến hành điều trị ngay nhưng mà sẽ phải theo dõi vô cùng là sát uh, cộng thêm với việc là mình phải hỏi rất kỹ về cái tiền sử gia đình xem có người bị ung thư gan không và tìm thử xem là bệnh nhân có các cái biểu hiện khác ngoài gan không nếu như có các cái biểu hiện khác ngoài gan hoặc là có tiền sử gia đình thì mình nên điều trị sớm em xin cảm ơn ạ uh, the second question cảm ơn the second question uh, could you share us your experience about the role of the HBCRAG in pregnancy and uh, immunosuppressive therapy. Okay, so the the role of uh, hepatitis B called related energy in pregnancy and uh, immune immunotherapy. You suggesting such uh, for the cancer treatment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the correlated antigen uh, reflect the transcriptional activity of uh, CCC DNA, and it uh, usually has a high correlation with HPV DNA. So in pregnant women, uh, if the HPV DNA is high, I think the correlated antigens uh, should be high. And nowadays, uh, for pregnant, uh, for E antigen, uh, for uh, HPV uh, carrier uh, mothers. Uh, with a uh, high HPV DNA, for example, above uh, 20,000 or uh, international premier and or even higher. Uh, some uh, international guideline uh, may uh, recommend uh, the antiviral therapy at the third trimester of uh, pregnancy, uh, trying to reduce the HPV DNA level uh, at the delivery. Because uh, previous studies show if the carrier mother uh, has a very high HPV DNA level uh, at the delivery. Uh, even we use the hepatitis B vaccination uh, plus uh, hepatitis B immune uh, globulin. Uh, the, the baby still have a 10% of opportunity to become HPV carriers. Therefore, uh, we uh, need to reduce the HPV DNA as low as possible at the delivery. So that's the reason why uh, we are use the antiviral uh, drugs uh, at the third trimester of pregnancy. And the recommended drugs nowadays is uh, atenophobia. And the previous uh, randomized control study showed the efficacy is very uh, good. Uh, none of the babies uh, born to uh, treated uh, mothers uh, get HPV uh, infection. So I think uh, in pregnant women, maybe we, we can use both. Uh, either one is, is okay the COVID agent or HPV uh, DNA. And uh, for uh, immunotherapy, uh, I think there's not so many data on this issue. So it deserves uh, further studies. Thank you very much. À, dạ, câu hỏi thứ hai là liên quan đến uh, một câu hỏi đấy là kinh nghiệm của giáo sư trong cái việc sử dụng cái dấu ấn HBCRAG ở phụ nữ có thai và ở những cái người mà sử dụng uh, cái thuốc ức chế miễn dịch thì uh, giáo sư có trả lời như sau thứ nhất là cái HBCRAG là một cái chỉ số phản ánh cái uh, mức độ hoạt động của CCC DNA và nó có cái tương quan khá là chặt chẽ với nồng độ của HBV DNA thế thì ở phụ nữ có thai thì thường là nếu mà HBV DNA mà cao thì cái mắc cơ HBCRAG nó cũng cao ờ, và ở phụ nữ có thai thì nếu như mà HBV DNA rất là cao trên 20.000 UI trên ml thì theo các cái hiệp hội ở khuyến cáo trên ở thế giới thì mình sẽ sử dụng thuốc kháng virus vào cái thai kỳ thứ ba cái quý thứ ba của thai kỳ để hạn chế cái việc mà lây truyền HBV sang cho con bởi vì là các nghiên cứu đã chỉ ra rằng nếu như các em bé mà chỉ có dùng huyết thanh và chỉ có được tiêm phòng vaccine thì vẫn có 10% là uh, sẽ mang, mắc có uh, HPV. Vì vậy nên cái việc mà điều trị uh, HPV ở mẹ vào 3 tháng cuối của thai kỳ nếu như HPV DNA cao thì khá là quan trọng. Và cái loại thuốc mà uh, 
được khuyến cáo đấy là tenofovir và các nghiên cứu thì chỉ ra rằng khi sử dụng tenofovir thì cái tác dụng tương đối là tốt không có bé nào mà bị nhiễm HPV cả nếu như các bạn có thể sử dụng cả hai cái marker là HPV DNA hoặc là HPCRAG hoặc là sử dụng một trong hai đều được bởi vì cái tương quan giữa hai cái marker này rất là tốt thế còn đối với cái câu thứ hai là ở bệnh nhân mà có sử dụng các cái ức chế miễn dịch ý, thì thật ra là hiện tại chưa có nhiều dữ liệu cho nên là giáo sư cũng chưa có thể chia sẻ được nhiều. À, xin cảm ơn ạ. Uh, thank you for your uh, response. Uh, and the, uh, the next question. Uh, for the patient fell TDF, should we switch to TAF or is it better to combine with the uh, antigravy? Uh, Actually, in our clinical practice, we rarely encounter patients fail uh, to uh, TDF. And because uh, the TDF and the TAF, they have the, the same uh, active uh, component. So if the patient already fail uh, to uh, TDF, I think we may not uh, uh, switch uh, to uh, TAF. So uh, in case, if this is the case of so-called uh, resistance, Uh, to uh, TDF. I think the current uh, recommendation guideline is to combine the antecavir uh, to uh, cover the drug resistance. Yeah. So we can use the combination uh, either TDF or TAF. Yeah. Sorry. Please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, câu hỏi của quý đồng nghiệp là nếu như thất bại về TDS thì chuyển sang TAP hay là phối hợp với Entocavir thì uh, giáo sư cũng có trả lời là thật ra thì cái thành phần cơ bản của TDS và uh, TAP là giống nhau do vậy mình sẽ không có chuyển sang TAP mà mình sẽ phối hợp với uh, Entocavir tuy nhiên là trong thực hành lâm sàng của giáo sư thì cũng rất là ít gặp những cái trường hợp mà uh, kháng trị với Tenofovir. Em xin cảm ơn ạ. Uh, the next question. Uh, many patients respond well to and a drug in terms of the inflammatory activity, ALT and HBV DNA load uh, normal. But long-term monitoring of the HBSAG level show no improvement. So what more uh, should we do for this patient? Does the PEC interferon therapy um, have uh, many uh, benefits? Okay, I think this is also a very uh, good uh, question. So there are some studies uh, previously uh, showing that the TDF uh, can reduce hepatitis B surface energy more uh, than entecavir. That is from a Japanese uh, group. So if the patient uh, have a very good response uh, with uh, a normal ALT and the negative HPV DNA, but the surface energy is still high, I think that's usual because uh, the, the nukes uh, has nothing to do with the host immunity or with the CCC DNA. And I just mentioned uh, the HBSAG and the core relating antigens are a refraction of uh, activity of uh, CCC DNA. So uh, as you just mentioned, so if we want to reduce uh, the HBSAG, then we need to uh, in, enhance the host immunity or reduce the CCC DNA. And the peculiar interferon is one of the options. Uh, our earlier study also showed that the interferon can reduce a surface antigen uh, more efficiently uh, than a nux uh, monotherapy. Yes, so it can be done. Uh, vâng, uh, một câu hỏi tiếp theo của quý đồng nghiệp đấy là rất nhiều bệnh nhân khi mà điều trị uh, các cái thuốc NA thì mình về được uh, men gan với cả HPV DNA ổn nhưng mà khi theo dõi thì thấy là cái nồng độ HPSAG không có cải thiện thì ở những bệnh nhân này có thể điều trị uh, pet antiferon được không? Thế thì uh, giáo sư cũng có trả lời là ở uh, trong các cái nghiên cứu ý, thì một số cái nhóm nghiên cứu đặc biệt là nhóm nghiên cứu ở Nhật ý, thì họ thấy là sử dụng uh, tenofovir thì giảm được cái nồng độ của HPSAG tốt hơn so với lại entocavir. Uh, một điểm nữa đấy là uh, đúng là quả thật là trong thực hành mình gặp nhiều những cái bệnh nhân mà mình điều chỉnh được ALT và HPV DNA về ổn nhưng mà cái nồng độ HPSAG thì cao bởi vì là nó phản ánh cái uh, CCC DNA nó vẫn còn tồn tại cũng như là cái phản ứng uh, miễn dịch của cơ thể của vật chủ. Vậy thì nếu như mình muốn kiểm soát cái CCC DNA hoặc là mình muốn uh, 
tác động vào cái miễn dịch của cơ thể vật chủ uh, bằng để để mà biểu hiện bằng cái việc giảm nồng độ HPSAG thì hoàn toàn của mình có thể lựa chọn cái pec interferon và các nghiên cứu thì cũng đã chỉ ra là pec interferon thì có khả năng làm giảm nồng độ HPSAG tốt hơn so với các thuốc NA. Dạ em xin hết ạ. Uh, there is uh, some question uh, of the uh, Dr. Trần Quang Trung from uh, Germany. Uh, he he want to answer you some question. Um, okay. Now, Dr. Chung, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Huang, for uh, giving me a chance to give us a question. And uh, greeting to Professor Kao. Uh, thank you for the very informative lecture. And uh, it's very nice to see you after six years. I still remember the lecture in Nagoya about six years ago with Professor ah. Goto. Yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of questions in uh, the topic and my colleagues already uh, give a lot. So I will come to this uh, practical question. We learned from previous uh, lecture from Professor Hui that NAS will be the emerging problem in next years. So right. what is your advice for clinicians to uh, keep in mind in dealing with the next patient with uh, HBV comorbidity in clinical practice? Thank you. Uh, can I repeat your question? The last sentence. Yes. So, uh, what should we keep in mind in yeah. dealing with the the NAST patients with oh, yeah. comorbidity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, the NASH is uh, emerging a uh, liver uh, disease uh, as we uh, con as we are concerned. So, uh, so nowadays uh, there are some uh, the changing the terminology. Uh, from NAFLD NASH to uh, MAFLD, M-A-F-L-D, because the MAFLD can include uh, more uh, patients, especially those with other liver diseases. And our previous study uh, from Taiwan showed if the chronic type 3 patients with uh, a fatty liver, uh, which uh, fulfill the criteria of uh, metabolic dysfunction uh, fatty liver disease, they uh, have uh, more severe uh, liver fibrosis. Uh, than uh, other uh, groups of patients. So therefore, uh, nowadays, uh, if the chronic type patients have a concomitant uh, fatty liver disease, uh, we, they, they should be uh, more uh, closely uh, follow up or even uh, to receive the antiviral therapy first, because uh, on this side, at least we can control the HPV uh, activity. And the other side, of course, we have to encourage them to do uh, more uh, exercise, uh, the diet uh, change, and the modification of uh, lifestyle, uh, trying to reduce the impact of uh, fatty liver uh, on the chronic uh, hepatitis B. And, and the other way is we are looking forward uh, for uh, new drugs uh, to control uh, fatty liver or even the, the NASH uh, fibrosis. Yeah, thank you for a very important question. Thank you for very much, yeah. Uh, because of the time the limit, um, uh, we have the only one uh, question uh, for you. Um, yes, thank you. Should the corticos uh, uh, should the corticosteroid uh, be used in the severe acute exam exacerbation of the HPV? Uh, it's a practical questions, but the the data is is very uh, controversial. I think in old studies, uh, some know that uh, the, the hepatitis flare uh, of HPV infections is due to the uh, host immunity against the HPV infected liver cells. So the simple idea is we use steroid uh, to uh, reduce uh, the necro inflammation, just like we use a steroid for the treatment of COVID-19. We are trying to prevent the uh, cytokine storm. But unfortunately, uh, some uh, randomized uh, study showing that the corticosteroid is not uh, effective uh, to uh, affect the long-term outcome uh, of uh, the HPV patient with very severe uh, hepatitis flare. So nowadays we have uh, more potent uh, drugs, uh, that is the, the nukes. So if we can uh, detect the severe hepatitis flare as early as possible and uh, give the drugs uh, right away, I think most of the, the patients 
uh, can be uh, saved. And the other way, we need to uh, monitor the liver reserve because the, the nukes uh, it, it may need uh, two to three weeks uh, to uh, have uh, its uh, effect uh, to reduce the necro inflammations after uh, the reductions of the viral load. So if the patient's deal with a very poor liver reserve or even the signs of hepatitis compensation, uh, we need to uh, work with our uh, liver uh, transplant uh, colleagues uh, trying to do a liver transplantation if needed. Thank you. À, dạ vâng, câu hỏi uh, cuối cho giáo sư tức là uh, uh, đang hỏi về câu chuyện là sử dụng corticoid ở trong những cái bệnh nhân mà có cái đợt uh, tiến triển cấp uh, của uh, uh, virus viêm gan B. Thế thì giáo sư cũng có trả lời là thật ra thì uh, cũng có những một số nhà uh, lâm sàng nghĩ rằng là sử dụng corticoid để ức chế cái phản ứng viêm giống như là um, có dùng corticoid ở trong uh, COVID, dịch Covid vừa rồi cũng có một số ý kiến ạ. Thế thì uh, tuy nhiên là thật ra là các uh, cái nghiên cứu ACT chỉ ra rằng là nó không có cái tác dụng lâu dài và vì vậy mà mình nên sử dụng các cái thuốc có virus sớm. Ở ngoài ra thì mình phải theo dõi cái chức năng gan rất là sát bởi vì là có thể phải mất khoảng độ 3 tuần thì các thuốc mới thật sự có tác dụng. Vì vậy nếu như mà chức năng gan của bệnh nhân mà không có cải thiện ý, thì thậm chí là mình phải suy nghĩ sớm đến câu chuyện là ghép gan cho bệnh nhân.